So this is the second generation version of the Apple Watch SE. And right here, I also have the latest generation of the Series 9, as well as the Ultra 2, which these two Apple Watches were unveiled in 2023 during Apple's keynote. Meanwhile, the second generation SE was unveiled in 2022. So just because this is an older model, you'll be surprised how capable this Apple Watch is, as it shares literally almost 70% of the Ultra as well as the Series 9 features, all in a much more affordable price tag. And the big differences between the latest generation's Apple Watches comparing it against the Series 8 or an Ultra first generation is primarily a faster processor, a brighter display, double tap gesture capability, as well as double the storage capacity, as these two Apple Watches have about 64 gigabytes of internal storage. Meanwhile, the SE still has the previous 32 gigabytes of storage. This is all thanks to the latest S9 chipset. So in this video, I'm making a buyer's guide between these three latest Apple Watches to help you decide which one truly is the right one for you. But to save you some time, if you already own an original Ultra or Series 8, although the new upgrades are nice and all, but unless you're looking for the latest and greatest, there's really no valid reason to upgrade. The upgrades are honestly minor to these latest models. However, if you're in a market for a new Apple Watch for the first time, or you're upgrading from a very old Apple Watch, maybe like a Series 3 or possibly a Series 4, then this is the right video for you. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. The Ultra 2. Yes, this is the most expensive Apple Watch available in the market. It also features the largest display on any smartwatch that Apple has ever produced. 49 millimeter to be exact. Only comes in one size, but LTE is standard. And yes, even though the Ultra 2 is almost twice the cost as the Series 9, it doesn't really mean it's gonna have twice the features. You see, both of these two Apple Watches, including the SE2, have very similar features that you'll expect to find in the Ultra 2. In fact, the Series 9 has about 95% of those features, and then the SE2 has, shares about 75% of those features. And spoilers, they are all really loaded, as all have the Apple ecosystem capability. Hand-off mode works on all these three Apple Watches. You have access to Google Maps, which supports offline modes on all these three Apple Watches. You have compass tracking capability with back tracking, Apple Pay, and then in terms of the workout feature functions, they all share the same exact workout library. You even have the capability to customize them on all three of these, including the SE2. Yes, you heard me right, the SE2 has the same fitness tracking abilities as the most expensive Ultra 2. So generally, between these three Apple Watches, it just comes down to durability, wearability, and battery life. So real quick before we continue with the rest of the video, if you do find this information informative and helpful, hit that like button. It really does help out a lot, as well as you can subscribe while you're down there. But let's talk about what's the same between these three Apple Watches in depth. Well, in terms of apps, they all have the same apps, just the Ultra 2 does have the depth sensor capability. So if you're a scuba diver or somebody who, who's just into swimming in general as an enthusiast, you may find the depth sensor that's built into the Apple Watch Ultra to come on automatically helpful. Because when it comes to this water resistant, the Ultra 2 does have a higher water resistant rating compared to the SE2 as well as the Series 9 as they're the only two rated at 50 meters versus the Ultra is 100 meters. And in terms of body, Ultra 2 is the only one that comes available in one color option and titanium is the standard. Meanwhile, the SE2 only comes available in aluminum, but the Series 9 can be purchased in both aluminum as well as stainless steel. And stainless steel can be much more durable than the aluminum body. Just however, the stainless steel can cost the same as the Ultra 2. But you have more color choices to choose from with the SE2 as well as the Series 9. And in terms of screen brightnesses, the most brightest of the three is the Ultra 2, as it can go up to 3,000 nits. But for my real world experience, I usually tend to lower the brightness down all the way to the last bar, because sometimes it's just too bright. Meanwhile, the Series 9 can go up to 2,000 nits, which is the same brightness that was first introduced to us last generation with the Ultra. The first generation Ultra was, able, was the first Apple Watch that could go up to 2,000 nits. And the fact that the Series 9 has this is amazing because no matter where I'm at, outdoors, in direct sunlight, I never once had to actually cover my display to see what my Apple Watch was displaying. 
Meanwhile, the SE2 is still on the 1000 nits brightness, but still works extremely well. But again, all three of these Apple Watches for out general outdoor use are bright enough. But if you find yourself always wearing sunglasses outdoors and direct sunlight, maybe you will benefit off the 3000 nit max peak that the Ultra 2 was able to deliver. And more key differences between these three Apple Watches is that the SE does not feature an always on display, but you may find this unnecessary, especially since I personally know a couple of S series five or newer Apple Watch owners or even ultra owners that will typically turn off the always on display. They just find this to be too distracting. So depending on your personal preference, you may actually like the fact that the SE2 doesn't have this, but the Ultra 2 and the Series 9, to those that do wanna know, they both have the always on display and it's also pretty bright. Now in terms of battery life, if you want an Apple Watch that can last longer than a single day, then without a doubt, I will highly recommend the Ultra 2. Even though it's much more expensive, that battery life differences is another key selling point to the Ultra 2 as it could easily last longer than three days. 36 hours under a single charge is what Apple's recommending. Low power mode up to 76 hours on the Ultra 2. Meanwhile, the SE as well as the Series 9 Apple Watches, these two are rated to be able to lasts about 18 hours under a single charge, and they both feature the low power mode, which allows these two Apple Watches to actually last longer, about 36 hours is what Apple is rating. Now, new features that was added on the Ultra 2 as well as the Series 9. Siri Offline is now available in part of the new upgraded S9 chipset that these two Apple Watches have, which allows you to not have a reliable internet connection and do the request that you ask it to. I find this typically helpful, especially when I'm running outdoors and I have terrible reception or I just don't have my phone on me and I'm just utilizing GPS strictly. Siri was able to always start my outdoor workouts and give me general information. So depending on where you live around the world, if you have always a strong reception, this isn't much of an issue. And also if you're an individual that doesn't rely on Siri a lot, you may also just not find this useful. I'm in both ways. I typically prefer just doing things manually and not having Siri involved if you would ask me. In terms of the double tap gestures, the Series 9, the Ultra 2 are the two Apple Watches that have this a capability. And I would typically rarely use this. I'll find myself mainly using this whenever I set like a timer on my wrist and I just wanna quickly dismiss it, especially in situations when I actually have my hands full. But there's a clever workaround where you can actually enable this on an Apple Watch that doesn't have this by enabling the assistive touch. If you'd like to know more how I was able to do this, I'll reference this video watch later. The capability to answer phone calls, dismiss alarms, pause and play your music. You'll find that older Apple Watches have this capability, so this is not much of a selling point if you absolutely need this. So yes, in a way you can enable this in the Apple Watch SE second generation as well. Now, depending on your lifestyle, you may find the ECG capability to be useful as both the Ultra 2 as well as the Series 9 both have this capability. The only feature that they lost is again, the blood oxygen sensor. But if you purchase an older Apple Watch or the retail store you're buying it from still had an older Apple Watch, that's the latest Series 9 or Ultra 2. They just haven't received a new inventory from Apple just yet. You can verify if you look at the part number. If the part number ends with LWA, that means it has the blood oxygen sensor feature removed until future updates as soon as Apple resolved the patent problem. But when it comes to overall performance, you'll find that the S9 is slightly slower than the S9 chipset that's found on the Ultra 2, as well as the Series 9. But if you have one of the new iPhone 15s that shares the new W2 chip, you'll find that the Series 9 as well as the Ultra 2 are the only ones that have this Find My iPhone capability where very similar to AirTags, they will actually show you in real time how close you are from your iPhone. So in other words, the SE2 does not have this ability. You'll have to stick with your standard pin to find your device, which isn't really much of a big deal. But now let's talk about size. This is where everything is just different. The SE2 can be purchased in the smallest size possible, 44 millimeter, but you can also settle with the larger version for the SE2, and that is the 44 millimeter. Meanwhile, the Series 9 can be purchased in a slightly larger, small screen size, as it's available in both a 41 millimeter as well as the 45 millimeter. But if you absolutely need a larger display, the Ultra 2 has the largest display. And the main advantage to this is if you have a smaller wrist, I will recommend going with a smaller Apple Watch as this will be the most comfortable option for you. But in terms of screen real estate, the only main advantage here is you're able to fit more text on the screen, especially when viewing text messages. 
So depending on your budget, because the price also varies depending on the size you select, the main advantage I see here is just readability. And for thickness, the Ultra 2 is the tallest one out of the three. And then for the weight, here I have them on the screen as so I just weighed them on the scale. But I can definitely confirm that yes, the Ultra 2 is definitely noticeably heavier, but it's nowhere near a comfortable amount of weight. As all three of these Apple Watches, I'm able to put on my wrist and just forget about it and carry on my day without noticing that I have like something ridiculous like a center block on my wrist in case you're curious. For the screen material, the Ultra 2 is the only one that's using Sapphire by default. Meanwhile, the Series 9 is using an Ion X that's also found on the SE2. And the main advantages here is the Sapphire is more forgivable if you accidentally rest this on concrete. Meanwhile, the Ion X is more likely to get micro scratches. And another main advantage with the Ultra 2 is its flat vessels, as it's protected around with its titanium body, which prevents it from making direct impact contact from the edge, allowing it to like scatter. Meanwhile, the Series 9 as well as the SE2 have this curvier display, which makes it more prone to easily get cracked in case you accidentally like fall off your bike or something like that, if we were to say. So although it does look cool, but if you do, again, have a history of like cracking your Apple Watch display, you may want to consider the Ultra 2. In terms of unique features, it's the Ultra 2 that features the night mode capability, but it's only supported on these two watch phases, Modular Ultra as well as Wayfinder. And it has a unique way of turning this on because you could select auto and using the internal sensors, it can detect if it, when you're in a low light situation. And the reason why it's red, red is the color that allows you to maintain your night vision, which is why you see Audis and BMWs have that uh, red button layout in their vehicles. Now, since we're touching about the topic of watch faces, all three of these Apple Watches have a massive library of watch faces to choose from, including the newly added ones as well. But it's the Ultra that only has these two watch faces. Meanwhile, the Series 9 has the Contour Edge watch face, but everything else you'll find that's pretty identical. In terms of button customization, the Ultra is the only one with the action button, as all three of these Apple Watches do feature a digital crown and the power button, which can also do a couple of tricks. It's just with the action button, you customize it to do anything you want. But by default, you do have the capability to program this to start a workout, start a stopwatch, waypoint, backtrack, dive, flashlight, and again, you have access to the shortcut app. So you could program it to function with third-party apps as well. But the action button also allows you to play a siren. By simply long holding it, you do have the siren capability, which is primarily there for emergency purposes in case you're lost in the woods, stranded somewhere, so you can play this loud sound so you could get located quicker. And for the outdoor runner enthusiast, you'll be glad to know that all 3 ds app watches come with GPS standard. So depending on the app you're using, the Nike Club app is for example, after you're done with your run, it will actually show you a GPS layout of your run. But even the native app from Apple also provides this information now on all 3 ds Apple watches. So in quick summary, the Ultra 2 is able to connect to satellites quicker and also maintain a strong connection since it uses two different frequencies. Once these Apple watches connect to a satellite, they're extremely accurate. There's no issues whatsoever. Just again, the Ultra 2 connects to satellites quicker just by a few seconds. Now, when it comes to heart rate monitoring, all three of these Apple Watches perform extremely well as Apple Watches have been known to be extremely accurate when it comes to calorie counting as well as heart rate tracking. This also includes step tracking as well. But now another key selling point for smart wearables is sleep tracking. And from my experience, yes, all three of these Apple Watches do have that sleep tracking capability, but it's easily the Series 9 or the SE2 that's the most comfortable one to wear. Because with the Ultra 2, sometimes I find myself harming my partner, especially while I'm wearing it in bed. So I don't recommend that one. I highly recommend the Smooth Pebble Smooth Stone Style Edge. It'll save your furniture and will not cause you to harm others. So with that said, that is the main differences between the SE2, the Series 9, as well as the Ultra second generation. There is also small minor things we didn't really touch on, like the microphone array that's found on the Ultra 2 is three microphones versus the SE and the Series 9 have a dual microphone array. But in my real world usage and experience, including older Apple Watches like the like the Series 3, Apple Watches always perform extremely well when, when it comes to its call quality. But if you do find yourself in the harsh, windy environments, you may benefit off the three microphone array located inside the Ultra 2. Which one is truly the right one for you? Well, generally, durability is definitely a topic I want to talk about. 
comfort, and battery life. When it comes to durability, clearly the clear winner here is the Ultra 2. Titanium body, bigger design, and the glass display is less prone to easily get scratched or cracked. And then another key advantage is the longer than two days battery life. But you do have that hefty price tag to consider, which easily makes the Ultra 2 better if you do a lot of hiking, mountain biking, dirt biking, sports, or even if you find yourself doing a lot of blue collar job or even law enforcement jobs as well. But the Series 9, as well as the SE2, they're not delicate Apple Watches at all. They're pretty hardcore as well. So they're extremely durable. Just the screen, if you have a history of, again, of cracking your displays or find yourself in the worst environments and you find yourself having needing to take off your watch, if you don't want to do that anymore, the Ultra 2 is guaranteed to survive much more. But it's not like the Series 9 or the SE2 is incredibly fragile or anything like that. It's just a bit more acceptable to crack or scratch thanks to its rounder edge and less durable non-sapphire glass display but for more like everyday household use like mechanic work cycling or outdoor running sport activities the series 9 as well as the se2 will be perfectly fine and then although the se2 the series 9 doesn't have a longer than two day battery life if you have a consistent daily routine like charging your phone on a daily basis there shouldn't be an issue here whatsoever but if you do forget to charge it it's the series 9 as well as the ultra 2 that does support fast charging capabilities and then when it comes to looks uh, to me i do tend to usually use the ultra 2 more than my series 9 as well as the se2 too, especially since it doesn't look like an Apple Watch. Well, now it does, but at that time it was still quite rare to see an Ultra user, but nowadays somewhat becoming the norm as well. But I do personally prefer this look. Again, personal preference. But without a doubt, the SE2 as well as the Series 9 are the most comfortable Apple Watches I could use on a daily basis, as well as sleep track with. So it's honestly just a toss up. If you don't care about all the other GPS tracking abilities, EZG. You just want a smartwatch that will share with you your notifications, download third-party apps. And yes, even though it doesn't have a keyboard, you could download a keyboard in the app store so you can message people without verbally using dictation or scribbles to reply to your messages. So the SE2 is honestly more than enough for the everyday user, especially if you're also a fitness freak, as it does everything extremely well, like these two other Apple Watches, and also shares its safety features like crash detection, fall detection. The SE2 is still my recommendation for the best value Apple Watch that's available on the market. The SE2 is right down in the middle, literally. Main advantages is you have the always on display, ECG, slightly bigger display, without sacrificing comfort, and everything else in a much more modern design. The Ultra 2 is honestly the most durable Apple Watch that ever exists, with an extremely good battery life, and doesn't look that bad. But even though this is the most expensive Apple Watch, LTE is indeed standard. Meanwhile, these two, you have to buy it separately. Then another key advantage with the SE2, it's perfect for kids because this does support Apple's family ability that allows you to track your kid at school and allow them to get a hold of you without them requiring to have a cell phone and iPhone themselves. So this could be their cell phone if they're like in elementary or in middle school and you don't want them to have a smartphone just yet. You could just give them this because this has a much more friendly entry level price compared to the other two. And they will always have access to you in case of emergency and you have the capability to track them at school as well as monitor their activity levels. So yeah, I know it's a lot, but hopefully this video helped you out and I was able to share with you my thoughts and some of my opinions from using these three Apple Watches in the real world and how you could benefit from one over the other. So if this video helped you out, make sure you leave this video a like, get subscribed for more, and use my affiliate links in the video description down below if you're planning on purchasing one, especially through Amazon, as it sends a small kickback to the channel, which doesn't cost you anything more. It just allows me to earn a small commission, which all the funds and stuff like that goes to this channel, so I can continue delivering videos like this for you guys. Which is why these videos are sponsor free, which are directly powered from the viewers, so thank you guys so much. Now if you'd like to watch more, highly recommend checking out this video over here where I go through some of my favorite accessories in case you're wondering what I'm using day to day on my watches. Anywho, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one.